Yeah, man. Um, one position we did miss though, okay. before we move on to the free agency and the in that in the contracts and shit is running back. You yes. Know? Um, yes. Right, running back in the draft. I, you know, Brees Hall, like Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker are pretty much thought of to be the top running backs. And I wouldn't necessarily disagree with them, but, but like, man, there are so many good running backs in this draft that can be up clear upgrades and starters. And then in, in our, in our, in our, with the Texans, you know what I'm saying? I think that a yeah. guy that one guy that, uh, I, that nobody is talking about is Rashad white, man. You know, mm-hmm. um, he's a six foot running back, 210 pounds. I think he ran, he ran around like a four, four, you know, mm-hmm. good burst, like really, really shifty, really, really, um, how do you say it? Like, Really, really good contact balance. Doesn't, you know, mm-hmm. doesn't go down easy. Easy, you know? right. He's not. Tough to go down, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's kind of, uh, I mean, I don't like to compare people like this and they they have different builds, but it kind of reminds you of like a, like a, um, kind of like a Alvin Kamara, how he gets mm-hmm. hit in some kind of way. He just, I don't stays, know. Yeah, he, stays, yeah, stays up. Like, and, yeah. yeah, and I mean, God knows when he's going to get – I know someone is going to – like, because, I mean, NFL scouts aren't stupid. So mm-hmm. someone probably will take him in the second round. But mm-hmm. that's a guy that you can maybe get in the third round too that will be a clear mm-hmm. upgrade. And, I mean, we talk about yeah. every down back. Although he – I mean, I think he could put on 10 pounds in his legs and core, you mm-hmm. know, he, he, you know. But he's a guy that you really don't have to bring off the field. I think I'm sure he could probably catch decently and he mm-hmm. could run. And I mean, you know, so yeah. And, man. and something something that goes without people aren't saying or talking about a lot is that the fact that look at who the Texans already have on the roster and who they pay for running back. You mm-hmm. look at Rex Burkhead, so you're not gonna look for a receiving back mm-hmm. when you you know, if the guy can't, if the guy doesn't have the best hands, yeah, you want him to catch, but that's not going to, if you draft a running back, that's not going to be the Texans' main running back priority. If you look at even when Nick was with the Patriots, they had their bruising running back, like a LeGarrette Blunt, right? and they had their, their receiving backs, like a White. And, you know, even now, Damian Harris – Last year with the Patriots, he was their bruiser running back, and you still mm-hmm. had your receiving backs out, you know, as well. So I think that's how they're going to do it. They're going to go one-two punch with the running back. Um, even this year, you, the the plan was to – last year – well, not this year, this past year, the plan was to go bruiser with Mark Ingram and then go, you know, speed and receiving with Philip Lindsay. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the main plan, but neither one of those guys panned out. You know, right. they thought David, you know, everybody knows what David Johnson is and what he was. You know, he's gone now, so let's, you know, we're gonna mm-hmm. kind of not harp on it. But you know, though that was to me, that was the plan. The plan last year was to have the two running backs have Mark Ingram be your bruiser, him getting you the tough yards, and then have Philip Lindsay out the backfield catching, be your speed scat type back. Mm-hmm. So they end up you know, getting rest Burkhead. And so now Burkhead, who was one of those receiving backs from New England, you use him, but then you get a bruiser. You get a bruiser in the draft. You get, you know, the way Isaiah Spiller ran his 40. I think he, he in a pro day, he ran a five, a four, five, eight, or four, five, three, or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. on the second attempt. The first attempt, everybody was like, what the hell? Because he ran a four, six. Right. But he ran like, you know, a tenth, a second faster the second time. Right. Um, you can get him. I think he's dropping down boards because at first he was perennially, it was him and Kenneth Walker. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Brees Hall started getting some momentum and everything like that. But you can get him in the third round. If you choose to go other specialties, you can get a even a Robinson. Mm-hmm. Um, I know one of our, friend, you know, homeboys, you know, talk about um, Brian. Is it B? Brian or? Yeah, yeah. Brian Robinson. Yeah. Brian Robinson from Alabama, you know. He has a lot of tread on the tires. You know, my thing is, only thing that scares me about him is that he has basically one year of tape. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't really play much of at all his whole time in Alabama. He was there four years. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you, that kind of scares me 
especially on a team as good as Alabama, that you only have one year of tape and you're productive, that to me that's kind of, you know, it's kind of false advertising, if I should say. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like if you you can really put anybody at running back in Alabama and with the offensive line, with Evan Neal and all them on the offensive line, I feel like anybody would have been able to be successful. So that's the only thing that scares me about him in the fourth round. But, I mean, even a, um, Jerome Ford from Cincinnati, mm-hmm. who was a, a power-to-speed guy. Mm-hmm. To me, he – I just watching him on film, he – he's he flashes a lot you know and even if you want to go later and you know um tdp from from lsu yeah yeah. you know you can it's it's running backs available i don't think that they're going to reach i feel Mm -hmm. like in this if if you only have one second round pick and you go running back you better be a hundred percent sure that this guy is going to be the next um down, what's the running back from Indianapolis? Um, Taylor, Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor. You better be damn sure he's going to be the next Jonathan Taylor. And, you know, I think that running back is a position of need, but I also feel like if they get a serviceable running, serviceable running back in the late rounds this year, mm-hmm. running just like receiver heavy this year in this draft, running back is going to be heavy next year. Yeah, right. You know, like a B. John Robinson from Texas. I think mm-hmm. he's going to end up being a first round pick. Yeah. Um, and then Zach, Zach Evans, I think. Zach Evans, he's going to be, he's going to go in the draft. He's at Ole Miss. He transferred from T- TCU mm-hmm. to Ole Miss. He's probably going to have a breakout season in the SS- SEC. Mm-hmm. And then there's a guy at AM. I know you, Isaiah Spiller is, is, was high because he was productive, but Devon A. Chain, he's mm-hmm. a smaller back. But he has world class speed and he's tough as nails. And he, you know, most of his runs were up the middle. Mm-hmm. And so him, you know, I see him. If you're looking for that, you know, type of back, a smaller side type of back, if you get your bruiser in this year's draft mm-hmm. and you pair him with a, you know, speed back next year. So, you know, it all depends on what you want to do. But I think running back is heavy next year's draft. Mm-hmm. So even if you don't go on a running back, in the second or third round, if you get somebody in the fourth, because you got two fours, mm-hmm. you know, you can trade up in the fifth round with three six. So if you get a running back in one of those two rounds, I wouldn't be upset about it because I feel like you can get value. Um, even a Damian Pierce yeah, from Damian Florida. Pierce, yeah. And then that boy from BYU, you know, I think yeah. we need a guy that that like can can carry the ball, you know, mm-hmm. 20 times. Not that you wanted him to be the, the guy that not that you we're not gonna split carries, but you want him physically mm-hmm. to be able to carry the ball 20 times and wear the defense down, you know. Right. They don't necessarily have to be a, a home run hitter. We don't necessarily need the home run hitter right now mm-hmm. because we're just trying to get to where we can functionally run the damn ball. I mean, right. You, know <laughs> you gotta I mean? take baby steps. <laughs> I mean, damn, bro. You you know, like if you put Jonathan Taylor on this motherfucker, bro, I don't think that shit would look the same. I mean, he, he what probably, they what they call it? Three uh he's not even gonna get four yards to carry, like you know, three point eight hey, yards. Hey, carry, you know something so. crazy, bro? Cause I don't, you you wasn't on that space, bro, but they was talking, bro, and like they tried to tell me that the damn chargers had a good I mean char they good run good running game, but like bro, the Browns. And the Colts average 5.1 yards a carry. Mm-hmm. You know, Taylor is, I mean, the, even if they didn't have Taylor, they would still be averaging probably four yards a carry. You right. know what I'm saying? But he's right. the one that, he, he'll turn the three-yard gain into a 30-yard gain. He'll be flip the field, you know, but but mm-hmm. there's like just, you know, you don't have to, to have that kind of a bat to be able mm-hmm. to run the fucking ball. You know? Right. So. And I, I I think the hype with the Chargers is more stat based than if you watch them in games because, yeah, they they are productive running the ball. But most of their stats and most of their success with their running backs in San Diego, well, I'm saying San Diego with the Chargers yeah. is is their receiving. Like you look at Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler is a great running back, but he's more of a receiving back mm-hmm. than anything, even when they had Justin Jackson behind him. Mm-hmm. When Eckler was hurt, Justin Jackson was good. But even in the Texan game, he had success catching the ball out the backfield. Mm-hmm. And that's how they were productive against us in that game. 
Yeah. It wasn't them running up the middle. So, I mean, they talk about San Diego. I keep saying San Diego. They keep talking about the Chargers. Um, they keep talking about the Chargers and their running game, but the running game is predicated on them, you know, running running out the backfield, catching out the backfield. Yeah. So, I look at that, and my thing is it's only a handful of teams that are run heavy. Mm-hmm. That are run heavy. You have – people that are setting up the run for the pass. And I think, you know, Pep's offense is going to be more like that. I think he's going to be heavy on play action. Because in Indianapolis, when he was the OC, play action was Andrew Luck's wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how T.Y. got open all the times on the the stop and go, on play action, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, That's where they're going to use the running game to be more effective is that the fact that they have to, um, they have to run the ball heavy. They have to set up third and short set up, you know, even if it's third and medium, you're available to, um, to hit those passes, hit those slants, hit those, you know, digs for the first down. You know, I think that's what Pep wants to do. You know, if you can get a first down running the ball, you know, after first and second down, perfect. Mm-hmm. But the goal should be to run the ball where you're going third and four, third and three. Exactly. You know, you know, open up because right now I look at last year. Yeah, we tried. That's what we wanted to do, but we still end up being third and eight, third and seven because we wouldn't give them one yard to carry or two yards to carry. So you know, you end up having to pass the ball. So um, I think. Pep is going to be run heavy, but I think he's going to be diverse with it too. He's not going to just be, let's just run the ball, you know, three downs and if we don't get a first down, put that, you know, put that thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> I don't think he's going to be like that, but I do think that uh, it's going to be, it's going to be run, it's going to be run heavy and running back he, is going to be important. Be, he ain't going to be no damn David Cully, bro. <laughs> <laughs> David Cully, bro, seen that down fast and 13. He said, he said, fuck this shit, nigga. We gonna fuck this motherfucker. He said, we ain't even gonna try this. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Like, how the fuck is a nigga supposed to? I'm, I'm cussing him. But how, how are you supposed to believe? No, that ain't gonna be monetized on this. So it don't matter. How, how, yo, how, yo, how you supposed to believe in yourself when your coach be like, you know what, bro? We we punting this ball. Like, I don't believe in none of y'all motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Fuck this shit, dog. Like, you know? And, okay. and, and, bro, like, yeah. So, I think it's more of a mentality thing, dog. Mm-hmm. I think that, that, that Pelt and them are, are installing the mentality, like, where, you know, like, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to try to bully people. And I right. think that's how, how, I, you know, that's how you win football games. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, like, you know, like you keep your it don't matter how good like the quarterback is if mm-hmm. i don't have to throw the ball why the mm-hmm. why would i throw the ball right like if i had i want to go ahead bro no i'm saying point blank example look at the browns game we were actually beating the browns ass in that game mm-hmm. in all aspects on defense we were killing them on offense we were killing them mm-hmm. and then you know Tyra got hurt but in the second half Cleveland said you know what Let's just run the ball. You know, the game was close. We wasn't, they wasn't down by much. Yeah. Game was close. You know what? Let's just run the ball. <laughs> take it out of Baker hands. Right. And they all they did was just run the ball and they just ran it. You know, and the thing about running the ball as well is that when you run the ball effectively, by the time you get to that third and fourth quarter, um, defense is gonna be yeah. wide, 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 and that's when you have your your 30 yard, 40 yard break runs and yeah. all this stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. when those are like the 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 momentum killers and the and the game killers is when I look at the, the end of the game when Chubb made that lad that that big long run at the end of the fourth quarter, I think it was, mm-hmm. against the Texans. And Chubb made that long run and scored a touch. And I was like, that's the game right there. Yeah. You know, you that's that's a, that's what you call a, a game killer, a momentum killer, and all those, because he basically, y'all basically said. Y'all not going to be able to stop us. This is what we're going to do. Y'all going to get the ball. We're going to make sure we can rattle your rookie quarterback's head. We're going to get the ball back, and we're just going to run it. We're going to run the clock out. 